Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to do the chainmail pattern known as the Byzantine pattern. This is probably one of my favorite patterns for any kind of chain jewelry such as bracelets or necklaces, but as you can see you can also use it for earrings, pendants, and things of that nature as well. One of my favorite sizes to work with for this pattern is 20 gauge 1 8 of an inch ring like all these examples here are made out of. This example here is made out of a rainbow mix of enameled copper rings and it is one of my best selling bracelets when I go to shows or festivals or craft fairs, anything like that. The materials to make this are about $5. It doesn't take any more than 45 minutes to make one and I can easily sell it for about $30. The Byzantine pattern is basically a progression from the box chain pattern. So if you don't already have an understanding of how to do box chain, I have a separate video explaining that that I suggest you check out first. Let's get started. I have two different types of rings here, two colors to help make the visualization of this pattern a bit easier, hopefully. These are quarter of an inch 16 gauge rings. And the first thing that we're going to do is start by making a 2-2-2 two, two, two chain. Now just to make it a bit more obvious what side I'm working on, I'm going to come on one side of my 2-2-2 two, two, two chain here with a different ring. I'm using this larger bright aluminum ring and this is basically going to be the end of the chain that we're not working on and hopefully that'll make things a bit easier to visualize as well. Now the next thing I'm going to do is open up a blue ring to get ready for the next step and I'm going to alternate the colors here so I'm going to try to have blue rings going through black rings only and black rings going through blue rings only. That'll hopefully make more sense as I get going. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip these two black rings over and put this blue ring through them, pinning them in position, and basically creating a single unit of the box chain pattern. Um, again, if you don't know what that is, maybe check that out first because it'll be a bit easier to understand this pattern if you do that. So I'm gonna close that up, and I'm gonna add two more identical rings to this last ring that I just put in place. So three rings in total here. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is put two black rings through the three blue rings that I just added. And now I'm gonna add two more blue rings to those two black rings so you can see the kind of alternation in the pattern taking place here. I only have blue rings going through black rings. I don't have any rings of the same color going through each other. And if you want to make a two-tone Byzantine pattern, this would be a great way to do it. Next thing I'm going to do is open a black ring to get it ready for the next step. And now I'm going to flip these two blue rings over, making another piece of box chain. And I'm going to put this black ring, it's going to come down and go between these two black rings. It's not going to go through them, it's going to go between the two and through these two blue rings here. So you can see that once I do that and I pull this tight, what I've created is two pieces of box chain that are alternating in direction with three rings between them, so they're facing each other. So this is where it's a very clear variation of the box chain pattern, because the box chain is just a, a straight piece of box chain units that are all facing each other, whereas the Byzantine pattern is simply alternating single box chain units attached by rings. You can see I added three rings here, and if I go to one of the examples I showed you earlier, like this, which is one of my, my favorite pieces of Byzantine jewelry to make, there are only two rings connecting the alternating pieces of box chain. The reason I use three here is because this is a larger ring size and I want the chain to be a fairly tight weave when I'm done. So with two connecting, uh, two connecting rings, it'll be fairly loose, whereas you can see with the 
the smaller ring size, there wouldn't even be room for a third if I wanted to put it in there. And you could also just add a single ring such as this titanium uh, piece of jewelry here. So you can see there's single connecting rings and as a result it's a little looser feeling than either of these two examples. So those are just variations that you can decide what you want to do based on your ring size and sort of the, the look or the end product that you're trying to create. But for this example, I'm going to continue using the three joining rings, which means adding two more black rings to the black ring that I just added. Now I'm going to add two blue rings going through those three black rings. And then I'm going to add two black rings to those two blue rings. Now I'm going to open a blue ring to get it ready for this next step. And I'm going to fold these two black rings over and hold them in place while I put this blue ring between these two blue rings and through these two black rings, pinning that other piece of box chain unit in place. So as I rotate it, you can see the symmetries that are forming in the chain. So I'm going to close this blue ring and again because I'm using three connecting rings instead of one or two to make the, the finished chain a bit more firm, I'm going to double and then triple up this ring that I just added. So the process should be pretty clear by now. Next I'm going to add two black rings to those three blue rings and then two blue rings to those two black rings and then fold them over and then add another ring to secure the box chain in place. Now a simple speed weaving technique that you can use on the Byzantine pattern is to close two black rings in this case. The ring color obviously would be dependent on what rings you're putting through. So since I've got black rings here, I'm going to be opening a blue, putting two closed black rings on that blue ring, putting that through the three black rings, closing it, adding another blue ring to that same link. And from there, then taking a blue ring and putting that blue ring through these two black rings. And now because I'm alternating the color, I'm going to close two blue rings. And open a black ring, put the two blue rings on it, put the black ring through the three blue rings, close it, double it up. And then open up another black ring here, fold over these two blue rings, creating another piece of alternating box chain and thus finishing another segment of Byzantine weave. And now I'm just going to continue that pattern and turn this into a bracelet. Okay, so here is the finished Byzantine bracelet that I made uh, using the speed weaving technique that I just showed you. It only took me about 15 minutes or so to actually finish this piece up, so it's a pretty quick pattern to make once you get the hang of it. There are a few other variations of this pattern. Up here I have a kind of Byzantine web pattern, and here I have a pattern where the Byzantine units are actually connected horizontally. If you've got the hang of this pattern so far, you can probably figure out how these are done just by looking at it, but I will be following this up with more detailed videos on the process for making both of these types of Byzantine variations as well. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video today. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel if you have any suggestions or thoughts for future projects. Let me know what you'd like to see as well. And thanks again for watching.